Hi there, it's IELTS Master Lee, and I'm here today with another Improve Your IELTS Speaking video lesson with real sample answers and scripts. Today we're going to be looking at speaking part three, and the topic is music. So in this lesson, you will, number one, learn or review a technique you can use for practicing speaking part three. Two, listen to three band nine sample answers that all use the technique. And three, analyze advanced speaking techniques, vocabulary, and grammar from these sample answers, whatever I find in this particular sample answers. So let's talk about two big speaking part three problems. Number one is saying too much, rambling, going on and on and on. And the reason this is a problem is because it makes it very easy for you to make mistakes or to get stuck or to have a logic problem where you don't know where to continue next. This is what happens when you ramble or talk too much. Number two is saying too little. And this is a problem because you're not seen as fluent if you can only say one or two sentences. Maybe you have a great idea, but if you can't talk about it and expand the idea, it's not quite enough usually. So how can we fix these problems? We can fix them by practicing answer structure. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So let me teach you or review with you a solid structure for speaking part three answers. And I call this the area technique, A, E, R, and A. And the A is in parentheses because it's optional, that last one. So we have answer, reason, example, and optionally an alternative. First, you're going to answer the question the examiner gave you. Second, you're going to give a reason for your answer. For example, this is because, or something like that. Next, you're going to include some kind of example. For example, for example, for instance, in my case, something like that. Optionally, for you can give an alternative answer. For example, you could say, on the other hand, or something like that. Remember, if you practice a lot with this technique, giving good answers on the real test will be easier. You don't need to think about A-E-R or A-R-E-A -E on the real test, but if you practice like this, then it will definitely help you on the real test. So let's look at some sample questions and answers for this lesson on music. The first question is, what kinds of music are popular with young people in your culture? And here's my answer. Pop music is popular nowadays with young people where I'm from. This is probably because the music companies and media spend a lot of money advertising and trying to appeal to the younger generation. For example, many music companies put a lot of money into making music videos that will draw people's attention. On the other hand, I suppose indie music, which doesn't have much corporate backing, is super popular back home right now with the counterculture movement. So that's another example. All right, so you can see on here we have the A, the R, the E, and the A alternative as well. Okay, there's a great example of an A, R, E, and alternative. Question one. Question two. What do you think influences a young person's taste in music? Parents and friends are the first things that come to mind. These are the people that you're around most often, so it's not really surprising that they have the biggest influence. In my case, my parents influenced my taste in music a lot. They used to listen to rock and roll music from when they were kids. So I grew up listening to this kind of music as well. All right, very basic A-R-E answer. Answer, reason, example. Okay, question three. How has technology affected the kinds of music popular with young people? Well, hmm, I've never really thought about this question before. Well, I suppose that it's really expanded the kinds of music that young people get exposed to. Uh, the internet has made it possible to find and listen to new music almost instantly. You could choose the same music your friends are listening to, but you could also go for something completely different on a whim. If I'm interested in listening to jazz, for instance, before I would have to go to a record store to buy some music. Now I can just type in famous jazz on YouTube and get an idea of what it's like. And so this is another A-R-E. And if you look at the R, at the end we have on a whim. We'll look at more language examples in a second, but on a whim just means in a quick decision that you're making in the moment. 
It's not a planned decision. It's just on a whim. It's a quick decision you make at that moment on a whim and a little bit different than your normal decision making. Okay. So let's look at some more interesting language examples from these. First, we have draw attention. This is a nice expression. I recommend you remember it, try to use it. To draw attention is to do something to get attention. Next, the first things that come to mind, the first things that I think of, but I'm not trying to think of them. They just naturally appear in my mind. The first things that come to mind. I grew up listening to. Okay, this isn't a very advanced phrase, but it is a nice and common phrase if you're talking about something that you did while you were growing up or something you did often while growing up. I grew up listening to. You could also say, I grew up playing soccer or I grew up playing video games. I grew up studying hard every day. Next, we have, I've never really thought about this question before. And this is something you can say if you're buying time to think. And finally, number five, you could also go for. This means you could also choose. And this is another nice expression. All right. Some great expressions for you to learn from this video today. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like more IELTS content on YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the little circle on the screen. You can also find us at youtube.com slash IELTS master. Last but not least, tell me what would you like to see next? Have a fantastic day.